My wife strongly implied she's gonna divorce me if I didn't let her open our marriage, justify her cheating. But she gave me rules when I start dating. So I divorced her and did this. Two and a half years ago, my 38 male, wife Sarah, 36 female, asked me to open our marriage. She strongly implied the alternative was divorce. After thinking it through, I said yes, primarily because we do have two children. I worked long hours and divorce sounded horrible. So I set up some ground rules. No bringing dates into our house. No dating mutual friends. Acquaintances, family members, colleagues, keeping things private. For the next two years, I focused on my job and on my kids. I worked long hours, little free time I had. I devoted to my kids. I didn't have the time for dating, so I wasn't even trying. I moved to another room because the thought of Sarah having sex with another man, then sleeping in my bed felt horrible. Our relationship became purely transactional. We became partners at raising kids. I didn't want to know anything about her sex life. This summer, I managed to fulfill my financial goals. I do not have any debt whatsoever. Both of my kids have enough money in their college fund. And all I have to do is keep adding savings every month into the fund I made for their first home deposits. So I did some math and decided to cut my work from 74 hours to just 30 per week. Sarah wanted to get indebted again to buy another house and a new car. I said no. I used my free time to finally have a vacation I really needed. Took the older son with me to tour the U.S. together. Did some renovation work on our house. Turned the basement into a man cave. Started working out, playing sports, leading a healthier life. Then I actually started trying to land a date. For me, just having sex with somebody is not my thing. I wanted to at least be a friend before that. To go out together, watch movies, have fun and have sex. So I dated a couple of women and found a Jane with whom I clicked. With Jane, I was going out to concerts, art galleries, comic cons, movies, and we would boink too. Sarah wanted to talk about my dates. I said no. Then I caught Sarah snooping through my phone and we had a very strong worded argument. Now Sarah wants to update the terms of our open marriage. She wants us to repair our marriage by going to a counselor. She wants us to sleep in the same room to go outside and have fun together. Our outside of marriage relationships are to be strictly sexual and nothing else. And we are to talk about our sexual partners. I told her that I'm content with the situation as it is. And I don't mind if she finds a partner to go out with. I encouraged her to, and I don't want to talk about our partners. She is holding her ground. At this point, I'm split between trying to fix our marriage and handing her divorce papers. I need advice, guys. Here's some relevant comments that the OP said, replying to a few comments. The man, you were working 74 hours per week and spending your free time with the kids. After she decided to open our marriage, at which point, I pretty much focused on completing financial goals as soon as possible. I was working longer hours before that, but not that long and I was finding time to spend with Sarah. Now that you have the free time, you're still choosing not to see your wife. I actually left her to initiate that. If she wished to, she didn't. So, yeah, she probably just didn't estimate you'd be having full-on simultaneous relationships, except I'm not having two simultaneous relationships. Since Sarah decided to open our marriage, the two of us didn't have any intimate moments. We didn't sleep together. We didn't go outside together. After I switched to working 30 hours, she didn't initiate to change anything. Our relationship was co-parenting under the same roof. Really? Once I started dating other women, she started snooping around. Once she found out I was dating Jane, she wanted to change the rules. Even then, she said nothing about closing the relationship. Just changed to only having sex outside the marriage, which boils down to me not being able to have a single intimate relationship. Update, January 29th. 2024. Several people asked for an update on my previous post. So here it is. Me and my wife, Sarah, had two sessions with a couple's counselor. The counselor was being very dedicated and professional. However, Sarah kept making demands which felt very unreasonable and unfair. She wants to keep an open relationship, which is only about sex. She doesn't want to find a job and keep working. She wants us to buy a new house. In every variation, she stubbornly wasn't to have two-thirds of these things. Today, during the counseling, she threatened divorce. After counseling, 
She said the counselor was taking my side and wanted to change to another counselor. Although I think the counselor was just trying to be fair and find a compromise. I had a talk with a lawyer and started divorce proceedings. She will get the papers in a couple of days. I will give her two months to start earning on her own. And after that, I'm not giving any money whatsoever to her anymore. P.S. I just wanted to add that I only started working 74 hours a week after she decided to open our marriage. Before that, I was working around 50 hours a week. Wasn't spending my time at bars and clubs either. Helped with chores as much as I could. And I was being home and available every weekend. All right, let's see some top comments. Papa John says, Wife, you know what'll fix this relationship? Buying another house and husband going back to working 70 plus hours a week. That way, there's no time for other relationships. And I can have my cake and eat it too. Someone else adds, Oh, I hadn't considered the possibility that opening the marriage might mean that he'd benefit too. Might be time for another ultimatum. The next person adds, I'm turning into an unskippable cut scene in therapy. You'd another example of crappy partner wants permission to F other people. It's a prize to find out they are, in fact, a crappy partner. And their significant other can do better. Not quite cake eatery territory, but like not far from it. And PD Ball says, she tried to be a cake eater when she said, hey, let's take on more debt so that you can keep working 74 hours a week and I can spend your money with my lover. Good thing he stood his ground. All right, let's go to our next cheating story. After we, me 35 female opened up our relationship, younger men have been throwing themselves at me. Husband 40 male is displeased. I'm a 35 female husband is 40 male. We agreed to open up our marriage. I am LL and wasn't very interested in sex. And he is HL. Since we opened up our marriage, mostly younger men have been throwing themselves at me. I have been very picky, but there are a lot of them. My partner is a younger man who's unexpectedly attractive to me. He is the physically opposite of my husband. My husband is very displeased. He feels emasculated. I don't want to close my side of the relationship, but I don't want him hounding me for sex. Is there a compromise we can reach? Why does he feel this way when it was his idea and he is also getting action? Let's see some of the relevant comments. Yellow Beast says, He doesn't want to open your relationship. He wants to have sex while you don't. The Opie replies, That's why we opened it. He said he couldn't stand not having his needs met. The next person says, If he opened things because of your low libido, it could be hitting him hard emotionally. If you're now far more sexually active with others than you were with him, you're not doing anything wrong but I could definitely see him having anxiety about your romantic and sexual feelings towards him. The Opie replies, I'm not far more sexually active with my other partner. I am happy with once a week, but our styles match up more than mine and my husband. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go whenever, wherever. He is happy with his partners as far as I know. They have a lot of kinks they are exploring. I need non-sexual affection, kissing, for play to be in the mood. I prefer a delicate, more sensual touch. I still find my husband attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful and it feels like a chore half the time. I don't think he finds me that attractive anymore, but that's life. Update. I, 35, female, talk with my husband, 40 male, and we have more clarity where we stand. To clarify, I am still low libido. I'm happy with once a week or every two weeks. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go wherever, wherever. He has a lot of kinks that they are exploring. I need non-sexual affection, kissing, for play to be in the mood. I prefer a delicate, more sensual touch. I still find my husband incredibly attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful and feels like a chore half the time. I know he doesn't find me as attractive. He told me he needed his needs met and I couldn't fulfill them. We opened up the relationship. My husband and I had sex once since it began. He had learned things from his partners. We both hated it. I didn't like him yanking my hair hard or wrapping his hand around my throat, to let alone the kink or stuff he wanted. He hated how frigid it was. My husband needs sex to be affectionate, but we weren't having it. So he told me to go find affection somewhere else. I tried dating apps, but I wasn't interested in hookups. I really wanted affection, romantic or platonic. 
Ironically, men my age or older were looking for younger women or hookups. Younger men and women were more likely to want affection. I ended up meeting my partner in person through a mutual hobby. I also made some friends through friendship apps. My husband and I have and can do our own things separately, but my partner needs a lot of time, affection, and attention from me. He gets a bit territorial. I don't think he feels threatened by my husband, but my husband has remarked that my partner is always over. My husband has an apartment for his partners and lets me use the house. Finally, I talked with my husband on why he feels emasculated. He says he is over jealousy about me, but he is jealous about partners. He says that my partner and the men I attract are far more attractive than I should have been able to get. It made no sense as I have aged and don't look as attractive as I did back when I was 20. Meanwhile, he should be in the peak of his attractiveness. He's very put together, and he expected that as an attractive older man with disposable cash that women would be blocking to him. They do, but he doesn't like them for various reasons. Attractive young women want him to spend a lot of cash. They're interested in an equal relationship and expect him to spoil them. They're bratting entitled. Attractive young women who don't want money have mental health issues. Young women in the kink community and who are poly were ugly. Would be mistresses would leave when they found out he was in an open marriage. I don't know what to say. I can't help him with his problem. At it, my husband and I both thought that I would only get men interested in no-string sex or one-night stands, which I would not be interested in, rather than a close, affectionate, frankly committed relationship that I desired and filtered for. Surprisingly, there are men who wanted the latter. Edit 2. There are a lot of comments saying my husband has few prospects or he isn't getting as much action as he thought. This is untrue. He's a very handsome man and has been with several women since we opened up. A lot of women are attracted to him. He has sex with beautiful women, kinky women, accomplished women. He should be happy. At this point, I think he's just looking for something to be unhappy about. There is no perfect partner that meets his requirements. All right, let's see some relevant comments. Spider38 says, So basically, he wants some beautiful woman in her prime who has a successful career to have disposable income for and great mental health to be settled at being his mistress. Oh, yeah. Can't forget the fact he expects her to have sex on demand and be very kinky. It looks like he has very high standards. The OP replies, also someone who is kinky and sexually open to do a lot of things. I told him he should compromise, but he's unwilling because he's found plenty of women who fulfill some of his expectations, so he thinks he can find someone who will fulfill all of them. I don't think he's looking for a person, just a manifestation of all his desires. All right, let's go to the final cheating story. I have no idea on how to proceed with this one. My wife and I just met my father-in-law's middle school and high school sweetheart who cheated and left him for his best friend. She recognized my wife as his daughter the second she saw her. My question is, why now? Why after 34 years? What was she trying to accomplish by ambushing and upsetting my wife? Also, any advice on how to resolve this would be appreciated as I have no idea on what to do or how to approach this. I cannot talk to my father-in-law, at least not at the moment as he is a truck driver and is currently somewhere in Central Europe. And while on the road driving, anything that can distract him from the road outside of absolute emergency is absolutely off limits. I apologize in advance for the rate that I might be responding, anxiety, but I will read everything and would be grateful for any bit of advice or shared opinion that you can give me. So we go to town next to ours because I had work to do there. Rain started pouring and my shoes were soaked in seconds. Thanks for a recommendation of a friend of ours. We entered a shop that had a very good quality shoes imported from Germany. The lady started staring at my wife the second she saw her. She still gave me good shoes and I bought them. Plus warm socks that she gave me as a gift. Then she asked my wife if she was from our hometown, to which she replied, yes. Then she asked her if she was my father-in-law's daughter. My wife was a little taken aback by the directness of a question, but still confirmed. Then the lady revealed that she and him dated all the way from middle school to the end of high school when she left him. But when she returned, he had moved on. She was alone for some time, but ultimately moved on as well and got married to her husband, who was from this town and she moved in with him here. She then complimented my wife and told her that last she saw her was when she was 10. Wife is 31 now. 
She asked my wife many questions about man laws and my wife answered several times before I came to my senses and upon seeing how upset my wife was getting, gave an excuse for us to leave. Father-in-law's ex sent us a hi to my father-in-law and told us not to be strangers. My wife started crying the second we left the shop. And honestly, the way she was ambushed, I do not blame her. I blame myself for not reacting quicker. If I did, I could have spared her at least more of the situation. On the ride back, my wife was very quiet, which was unusual for her to be. When we got home, my mother-in-law, who was watching our kids, greeted us at the door and my wife gave her a long, silent hug, which was a clear sign of how upset she was, and just left for our bedroom. My mother-in-law was puzzled and I told her everything. She took it relatively calm and told me what my father-in-law's ex left out. She had cheated with his best friend since childhood at the time and ultimately left to be with him. Six months later, she left the affair partner after catching him cheating and tried to get back with my father-in-law, but he rejected her as he had moved on and was already dating mother-in-law. She did not take it well and even tried on several occasions to break them apart using very dirty methods, even attempting to involve my father-in-law's sister and her and his parents who were close friends and neighbors. Both attempts unsuccessful. As of now, my wife is in her room and I will talk to her when I get my bearings on how to approach this. I also want to give her a breathing space so she can process the situation and we can talk about it with clear heads. Alright, let's see some top comments. Titos it says, there's nothing to solve here. You've encountered an incredibly malevolent person in your family's life. This isn't a personal situation that can be fixed by any of you, so best not to contact her. Fortunately, your father-in-law has found good, healthy support in his wife and family. That's commendable. My best advice is to listen to your wife when she's ready to talk. She's unable to articulate a rush of awkward and negative feelings, which is completely normal. It's good you were there because you can relate and help her recognize what she's going through in a way that's neither dismissive or coddling. Good on you for disrupting the dynamic. May your protective instincts serve you both in a long and healthy marriage. New Arrival 98 says, I think the timing was accidental, and this woman has carried the truth and guilt of how she treated your father-in-law for 34 years and sees an opportunity to soothe her own guilt by now making everything seem normal and they were just a couple that used to date, minimizing her choice and the effects on your father-in-law of that choice. Nobody wants to be remembered as a cheater, yet even 34 years later, she still carries that choice. Bushyboy19 says, She met the woman that effed up and realized it. The woman didn't ambush her. You came to her by chance. So you're a woman around 50 and you work in a shoe store and you have some regrets for some things you did when younger. This young woman walks into her store one day and she looks shockingly like one of those regrets, maybe the biggest one, her first love whom she spent part of her childhood and teen years with and then betrayed for nothing and he has a daughter and that could have been her daughter. She's not thinking clearly at all. She confirms that it is indeed his daughter and then there are all these regrets and emotions and she has to tell someone she didn't want to hurt your wife. Maybe she still lacks the empathy which led her to cheat in the first place but she just has to say something to share with someone. I'm sorry your wife was upset by this, but it should just confirm to her that her dad is a good guy and a strong one for not taking a cheater back. These events led to her birth. Your marriage. You guys are all lucky to have each other. This woman may have never experienced that because of what she did. I pity her. Update. This is what happened after I posted this. I took my time, and after a while I got to my wife's room. In addition of our shared bedroom, we have separate rooms at home that we use as offices and I hugged her and told her that I loved her and was there for her when she needed me. She took her time but in the end she opened up to me and told me how she feels. She was not upset by the ghost of her father-in-law's past coming to life but by the way this woman acted. She was still nice but was asking questions in a very invasive and unwelcome way. And the way she recognized my wife was unsettling. It took her by surprise. This was and is not an emotionally fragile person who cannot handle strangers. Hell, she handled my crazy ex who made an attempt to get back with me many years ago. But she has her limits. I also spoke to my mother-in-law on the phone and she revealed some more things about this woman. See, in addition to this woman trying to break my in-laws when she found out about them, she did something that got me seething with rage. Four years after her attempt to get back with father-in-law, she encountered my mother-in-law 
my wife who was a toddler at the time and my mother-in-law's mother, wife's maternal grandma. Long story short, she made a scene and threw a rock at my mother-in-law. The rock hit my wife in the forehead instead. She was not even two at the time. My wife's grandma and some people chased her off. This was the same woman we met. My wife still has the scar on her forehead. This woman was not sorry of what she did. My mother-in-law told my father-in-law's parents, and they told hers. From then on out, there were no problems whatsoever. After some time, my anger subsided and I realized that this was not the present issue, and right now my wife needs me, and she was my priority. After dinner and after we put our kids to bed, I told my wife that we were never going to this lady's shop again. We were done with that situation and the day as a whole. We just had to put this behind us, and what better way to do that than sleep on it? After all, the dawn is brighter than the dusk. Today after breakfast, I took my wife out for a walk. Our hometown is small, but it has a beautiful park on the south bank of the Danube River. We got there, and we got to our favorite restaurant. It is three-story building that has incredible views of the river, and we just spent a good time together. We talked again, and we put this thing behind us. I mean what else could we do at this point? We got home and everything was okay. We are going to forget about yesterday and this woman. This ghost of the past will remain a ghost. I also decided that I will not tell my father-in-law, as it would serve no purpose at this point. To end this on a cheerful note, the shoes are really good.